The matatu industry continues to play a vital role in bridging the gap in public transport sector in the country. It is a multi-billion and lucrative business that attracts many investors who find themselves trapped in a network of money laundering. The industry continues to be the center of attraction with various players competing to take control. It has grown to an extent even politicians see it as a venture for easy money. In fact, many know with an endorsement from the sector with over 120,000 matatus with a crew of about 3 million, it is a major boost to their win in their political arenas. The sector, however, loses over 50 billion shillings every year to a network of cartels. These cartels, Matatu Owners Association Chairman Simon Kimtai says, is a complicated syndicate that has left the industry bleeding and down to its knees. Kimtai says the syndicate comprises of rogue traffic police officers, county askaris, root marshals and touts who strategically and systematically rob the industry millions of shillings every day. If for instance, if your bus was to carry from country bus station, this bus station doesn't belong to county government anymore, they belong to hotels. If you want to have passengers going to Kisumu, for instance, there are people who will be the ones they say they scout for passengers and sell you passengers. At a certain percentage, maybe 10, 15 percent. Why should these people be there in the first place? And they are the ones who decide what to take. And you'll find there's different classes. There are those now in town service who sit the bus stop, they call passengers. A passenger knows where he is going when he leaves his house. And you'll find that there's somebody who imposes himself on you and you pay some amount for that job. We have complained of this. But you'll find it's a ring. It's a ring. There are those, the policemen who want them to be there. When they come, they collect their ass. The worst thing is that, uh, is, I wouldn't call it bribe, is an extortion. Because when you see every matatu stopped, I wonder whether everybody has committed an offense to bribe. So there is a culture and a pattern that, and a system that has been put in place to perfect it. A driver knows that if I don't give out maybe 100 shillings where there's a police stop, I will be a target and I'll be arraigned in court. And then our justice system. You'll be taken to court, you'll finish a whole year doing a traffic case. And the kind of cash bill that they require you to pay is so big that you would just want to part with your shoes. So this extortion ring, we have made recommendations that these static police checks, the traffic police checks, should be removed. and be replaced by patrols. Patrols who can stop at one point to check on speed, but not static in one position. We partnered with anti-corruption and NTSA to try and fight the vice. Anti-corruption decided to go for it. What happened? They arrested people. They are in court. What happens in court? They use the same money. And these guys are made, there is an order to make them go back to work. More so, the traffic department. That they cannot be removed. And the cases keep dragging. They are never judgments we've had. Number two, because of embarrassments. What they did, today traffic policemen go to the roads armed with AK-47, tell me which driver will not pay. Or tell me which anti-corruption who has a pistol will try to arrest this man with a machine gun. It is said traffic police officers take the biggest share in a day with every matatu forced to part with between 100 and 200 shillings for every trip they make to town. Those who wake up on a bad day are forced to part with between 500 and 1,000 shillings, failure to which their operations will be frustrated for the rest of the day. Let me tell you, the minimum, vehicles plying up country, 
loses close to 30 million shillings a day. That makes about 900 million shillings in a, in a month. We are talking of close to 10 billion shillings a year. We've not talked of urban transport, which when you look at it, it's, it's, it's pathetic. We don't do the business for ourselves. We do businesses for other people to gain. There's the cartels and the police, period. The leftovers for you is just maintenance of the vehicle. It's not a business that you rely upon. The Kenya Bus Services Managing Director Edwin Mukabana says circles are forced to part with between 20,000 and 250,000 shillings every week for their matatus to have an easy operation mechanism in the CBD. The money is shared between junior and senior officers depending on the route they operate. Surprisingly, it is said every time there is change of guard in the traffic department, every circle has to part with between 50,000 and 100,000 shillings for every matatu depending on the number of each circle has to appease the new bosses. Yes, they happen a lot and sometimes that's why I say this some of the things are perpetuated by ourselves in the, as operators that we we are the first people to go and say uh, assist me this, do this and do this. But by the way if you don't do that they will actually call you and tell you are you not aware that I'm here and uh, why haven't you come to see me? So uh, seeing me means that uh, you go there with an envelope. It is obvious, it is no longer hidden, it is it, on some, in some areas, they actually insist that every week you have to take to them a certain amount per vehicle that you have. It ranges from 200,000 to 20,000, depending on the zone where you are, and depending on how high you go. Now, why do Operators, why are they caught in this thing? They are caught in this thing because some operators are doing and others are not doing. Now, for those who try to comply and do good, they are the ones that are arrested. You will find that your vehicles are arrested more than some vehicles that are more dilapidated, they break rules. The country's head of traffic, Madam Jacinta Kenyo, however, dismisses this claim saying Matatu operations are no longer under traffic department but a devolved function. Kenya, threatening to sue anyone who mentions her in such syndicate, says she is satisfied with whatever she earns and that she does not need any kickbacks from the Matatu operators. Her sentiments are echoed by acting Nairobi traffic commandant Cheplimo Chesang, who says NTSA should answer the accusations as for them all they have been left to do is to clear traffic. Our investigations, however, reveals that over 50% of these matatus, especially on lucrative routes of Rongai, Buruburu, and Umoja, are owned by the same traffic police officers, leaving their juniors with no option but to hopelessly look as rowdy drivers float traffic rules. Those who have dared come in their way are forcefully transferred to remote areas as some form of punishment for pressing the wrong button. Kim Tai says the only baby they hoped would restore order in the sector was the introduction of the cashless payment system, which after spending over 2 billion shillings to purchase the gadgets, was completely failed by banks that competed to have the money in their accounts. We proposed, until I even had to persuade the president, to launch a product that would have at least done blow to popular practices, especially in town, in urban, urban transport by having the cash light, the, the, the electronic way of uh, paying, uh, fair paying. But it didn't see the light. We were thinking we were going to have a, a, a solution. It's actually, it was a ticketing solution, something that w would remove money from our vehicles. Actually, the biggest, the biggest problem in public transport is money being in the vehicle. And, uh, we were shoved aside. The regulator came in, took center point and uh, became the person to drive the issue. And uh, banks came in, they were all fighting to be able to have this money landing into their, to their, to their banks. I remember the Minister of Transport then, Mr. Kamau, said there's a, there's, a, there's a way a government does its work, that everybody must be in the system before the end of the year. So everybody must buy these gadgets when you're taking your vehicle for inspection because inspection is done once in a year. We spent hundreds of millions in buying the gadgets.
And I, I wish we could sue the ministry for that directive because they forced us into it while nobody was ready to take it up in terms of service providers. How do you force people into it and yet the other side is not ready? What interest do they have? And we know in Kenya today, when you want to sell anything, you influence, even a tender, you bribe your way out and people are forced to go into it. We lost money. We have the gadgets lying in our offices. It got to a moment where we were even paying, you must have a certificate from the bank, you know, because the banks are the ones who are now selling the machines because they came and showed us and they saw that you can be you can be allowed inspection. A certificate, not a gadget. Why the hurry? The whole thing collapsed. Mkapana says the road is eminent in the Matatu sector because there is no entry rules but open for anyone willing to cooperate. Do you know that in this country we have uh, institutions like, for example, teachers are trained in government institutions, yes. nurses are trained in government institutions, uh, agricultural extension workers are trained in government institutions. So Minister of Health has got a very good training program for developing their manpower. Yes. Minister of Transport has got nothing other than driving tests which was even done by being done by police. Now if you do not believe, believe in building capacity in your own ministry, how do you, where are you expecting to get people? So the government should tell us one institution that they have set aside for purposes of doing public transport training, road public transport. Why have they set up Bandari for Marine? Why have they set up East African School of Aviation for Air? Why do they have Railway Training Institute for that? Now, once you do that, then you professionalize the industry. To professionalize the industry, you start getting uh, people now developing values, developing ethics. There are certain things you, know, as a media person, we don't expect you to do. And if you do, the media council will be on your case. We can register you. That is not existing in transport. And that is why those cartels are coming up. So we need to deal with the issue of professionalizing the industry and creating careers that even if you are a driver, you can progress to become a fleet manager. Yes. Then we shall start seeing things happening. For them, the police officers have strategically positioned their agents who collect this money on their behalf. Mkabana says transport ministry should move in swiftly and introduce capacity building programs that can see some discipline restored in the sector. For Star Online, I'm Patrick Vidija.